broadcasting live from SOAR 2023 at the Gas South District Convention Center in Duluth, Georgia. It's time for North Fulton Business Radio, brought to you by Oberman Law Firm, helping you navigate the complexity of workplace issues. Now, here's your host. And hello again, everyone. John Ray here, Business Radio X. We are at the Gas South District Convention Center for SOAR 2023. Uh, wow, we've had a big day. Uh, about 700 people walking through the exhibit hall here. It's been a, a fabulous day. And uh, kudos, hats, hats off to all the great folks at Sherm Atlanta for yet another great conference. And we've had some great guests, and I'm here with another one, uh, Cheryl Laplace with Insperity. Cheryl, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me, John. Yeah, thanks for coming on. So let's give everyone an introduction to how you're serving folks at Insperity. Thank you. Uh, Insperity is a PEO, meaning we provide HR services to other businesses. Uh, In my role as an HR consultant, I assist my clients with HR strategy, uh, compliance, policies, any and everything related to HR. Terrific. And you were here at... Uh, the conference today with the fireside chat, um, which is, I love those because people get to ask questions, which is great. And so we, we you had a pretty engaged audience talking about reskilling and retooling. So to, to give some of the big ideas that you shared with the group. Sure. Um, when we talk about uncertain times or difficult times, we often see with businesses, we're talking about layoffs or pay freezes or hiring freezes. Uh, and this is when the company is being reactive to changes either within the organization or in the environment. So with reskilling or retooling or upskilling, it's called a few different things. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a way for companies to be proactive about changes in the industry or within the organization any anticipated changes, a new platform, a new process, having to work with a new system, and assessing where employees are currently in their skill and knowledge level and preparing them for the next level, what will be necessary to be successful in the next level. Wow. So a lot of this sounds like something that is, we keep hearing a lot about employee engagement, giving employees the chance to develop themselves personally. That's what all this plays into, right? That's a part of it. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it goes beyond just the employee's personal desires for what they'd like to do next. Mm-hmm. It's looking at the organization, what the organization needs to do, where they need to get in order to be successful in the new era. Uh, so thinking, for example, about technology, um, here at the exhibit, we have a body scan, which mm-hmm. can help people see their bone density and, and body fat and all that stuff. Well, years ago, that didn't exist. Right. So if employees in that old industry had been prepared for the new technology, they would not have had to lose jobs. The company would not have to suffer the impact to their brand in terms of uh, the perception that... Uh, is had about the organization, Mm -hmm. uh, they would be prepared and be nimble and ready for the changes when they came. Yeah. Um, Talk about why, I guess, being in Sperity and you and your colleagues being so fluent in this particular topic, why why it's so important for you as an organization. You obviously need to serve your clients, but why, why is it so important for you to offer these, uh, the thought leadership in this area to your clients? Well, John, I'll tell you the number one requested topic at every uh, convention, every conference, and every CEO roundtable has been how do we attract and retain talent? Mm -hmm. Um, So when you think about attracting and retaining talent, you don't want to let go of the good people you already have. Um, You already have folks that understand your mission, your vision, your values. They know your customers. They know what your uh, your company is all about. And good employees are hard to come by. So if you have some good folks already, you want to make sure that you keep them, you retain them. And one of the key ways to do that is to keep retooling them and reskilling them so that they remain viable. But also that helps the company with its brand in attracting talent as well. Um, They are seen as a company that helps employees to grow and develop, uh, but also it's the company that didn't just let go half of their workforce because they were no longer uh, skilled to embrace the new technology or the new times. 
Yeah, that that makes perfect sense. What are, what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see employers make when it comes to this area of reskilling, re- retooling? Well, first of all, not embracing it at all, right? Well, so, that's, yeah, that's pretty basic, right? <laughs> yeah, and it, and it happens, right? The, right? the change happens, and they're just left standing there with a workforce that is not prepared to embrace the change and an organization that's not prepared to embrace the change. Mm-hmm. So with the upswing of COVID, for example, there were companies that had no disaster preparation plan in place, mm-hmm. or they had not embraced the opportunity to allow employees to work from home as a benefit to the employee. Mm. Well, companies that had offered that benefit to employees actually reaped the benefits themselves because the employees were already equipped. They already knew how to respond to their work demands from wherever they were. Um, So that's an example of where companies who don't do this proactively are left struggling. Uh, Some companies went under as a result, right? Because Mm, they were not prepared. They didn't have a workforce that was equipped um, with the knowledge, the skills, or the equipment to navigate that change. So I would say that's the biggest thing. (laughs) Um, Beyond that, I would say building a culture of trust. Um, Again, the attracting and retaining talent, the our census statistics tell us that we're going to have a more diverse population, mm-hmm. period. It's mm-hmm. going to become increasingly diverse, right. which means the candidate pool is more diverse, mm-hmm. which means your applicants are more diverse. Mm-hmm. And so one of the biggest things that employers can do is to embrace that, prepare now for those changes, become comfortable. Uh, the folks that are different to you are comfortable in their own skins, right? Mm-hmm. If, if someone uses a wheelchair, they know that. Right. They're not uncomfortable with it. You are. So, therefore, you are the one that has to embrace whatever knowledge, skill, or comfort gaps they are so that you are better able to hire the best talent, whether it's someone in a wheelchair, someone with a seeing eye dog, someone with a hook for where their hand was, um, yeah. Someone who has visual disability, someone who looks differently than you do, wears mm-hmm. their hair differently than you do, speaks with a different accent than you do. These are the best you know, options for uh, people in your workforce. So you don't want to pass them over because of your own discomfort. So that's a big area where employers can wow. embrace change and really retool and upskill their own <laughs> comfort level. Sure, sure. That makes a lot of sense. So... Uh, as I mentioned, you had quite an engaged uh, uh, group that you were speaking to. What are some of the things that came out of some of the questions that you were getting? Uh, were there any things that you can put your finger on that you thought were uh, maybe some really great questions that folks asked that, that helped amplify some of the points you want to make? All the questions were really great. Yep. Uh, I had the best audience. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can recall well, some of the questions. <laughs> yeah, well, I, as I said, I mean, I'm sitting here right across from them. And I could tell that they were really interested in what you had to say and didn't want to end the session. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we did have the mic moving uh, through the audience there. There were questions about how to um, motivate employees who did not seem to want to embrace change, for example. So we talked about... Uh, Creating an environment of trust so people trust that your questioning, your asking, your interest is authentic, Mm. uh, which means having authenticity to begin with. So leaders have to actually care about their employees so that when they ask questions about, hey, what are your skills? What have you done outside of here? Um, People aren't afraid to answer. They don't think that it's like you're just, you know, you're just shooting the breeze. You don't really care about me. So building an environment of trust. But the question came about. Uh, from a conversation about employees having more to offer than what you see in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So some people are in your organization, but they've already run a company somewhere before, Mm. or they lead entire initiatives. They're great at project management. They're just not using those skills in your organization currently. So getting to know people as individuals and finding out about who they are, what they've done before, what skills and knowledge and experiences they have, and using that to the organization and also the individual's uh, advantage. Finding out what they want to do next. So if there's something that they need some skills in, helping to identify where they could gain that, whether you have a robust um, and comprehensive learning platform where they can 
gain skills, get a certification, or if you offer tuition reimbursement so that it can continue their education, whatever that is. Um, but it's just getting to know people for who they are. So the question was more about like, what about people who don't really want to speak up or they're resistant? And I shared the example with my kids. Like, I know some parents that eat the vegetables because I say so, but I was always one to explain to them, like, well, here's what carrots do for your body and here's what <laughs> green beans do for your body because I always feel like if people understand why mm-hmm. you're asking them to do something or why you're asking them to embrace something, it helps them to understand and digest what you're asking for and more likely that they will give you what you need. Yeah, people just don't respond to command and control anymore, do they? <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if they ever did. Yeah, I, yeah, you, <laughs> that's true. Um, great point. Um, yeah, and, and uh, you know, this is great work you're doing, uh, Cheryl, and we're just delighted that we could shine the light on that and uh, get the good word out on that. So uh, for folks that want to find out more about Insperity and your services, how can they do that? Insperity.com. Wow, that was easy. (laughs) (laughs) I-N-S-P-E-R-I-T-Y. I I love it. Cheryl Laplace from Insperity. Cheryl, thank you so much for the work you do and for coming on. Thank you for having me. And this has been terrific. And folks, just a reminder that our interviews today are underwritten by Oberman Law. If you have complexity in the workplace that need uh, great legal assistance, go to Oberman Law Firm. Thank you for joining us. This episode of North Fulton Business Radio is underwritten by Oberman Law Firm. Oberman Law helps local, regional, and national clients manage the sensitivities of employee relations in the workplace. 